Do you know the joke? Two planets meet at infinity. One planet asks the other one, How are you doing? The other one answers, Lousy, really bad. I am suffering on Homo sapiens. Says the first one, Oh, this is not really a problem. You will overcome it soon. But this is not a joke. This is a serial problem for us, the Homo sapiens. So, if we want to survive on our planet, we will have to stop destroying it. Therefore we must organize our energy production in a clean way. And this is possible. At the beginning the void was the empty space. So it got the Latin name vacuum. As you can see, you can see nothing. It is not yet half a millennium ago, namely in 1643, when a man named Evangelista Torricelli managed to prove that the void was not empty, but it contains a gas called air. If you regard the void as drawn now, you should have said 500 years ago, as you can see, you can see nothing. To understand that the air is a medium was not very easy at the beginning, so Torricelli had to remove the air in order to make it understandable as a medium to his contemporaries. The result was again a vacuum, a void containing less than the void before. Only the absence of the omnipresent substance helped us to understand the existence of the omnipresent substance, the air. Fourteen years later, Otto von Gericke demonstrated the force of the vacuum in Magdeburg using his famous both hemispheres, which have been pressed to each other by the surrounding air as long as the space between them has been evacuated. Even two horses could not pull strong enough that the hemispheres had been disconnected from each other. The name of the pressure as for instance, the pressure of the air was chosen Tor, following the name of the scientist Torricelli. From there on, the vacuum was the space free from visible matter. But the vacuum was not really empty. It still contained invisible matter. In 1948, Hendrik Brugt Gerhard Casimir said, that the vacuum still contains some zero-point waves of quantum theory. If I would have asked you a bit more than 100 years ago, you should still describe the picture here with the words, as you can see, you can see nothing. Same as Torricelli removed the air in order to help people to feel the air pressure, Casimir wanted to remove the zero-point waves in order to help people to feel their pressure. But people did not believe him. Until finally, Steve Lamoureux from the Elite University Yale in America verified the pressure of the zero-point waves in 1997. This is not long ago. He verified this by an experiment which was in principle the following. Some of the zero-point waves are removed in order to help people to take notice of the omnipresent waves by missing them. Two metallic plates, orientated parallel to each other, have the characteristic to remove some zero-point waves in between them, namely the stationary waves, so that, so that a pressure will press the plates towards each other. The plates are pressed by the force of the quantum vacuum against each other. This is also the case when the plates are electrically neutral and connected to ground. Thus, the force is called Cosimi force nowadays. And suddenly there is a little bit of light in the darkness of the vacuum. Finally, the zero-point waves go back to the fathers of quantum theory, such as Werner Heisenberg, Niels Bohr, Erwin Schrödinger and others. They found many important things. Also the fact that oscillations can never come to standstill. Pendulum, as we know it from instance from our wall clock, could not simply hang down if it would be an object of quantum mechanics. 
It cannot stop as oscillating as a macroscopic pendulum can do. This is one of the topics of quantum theory. We can regard this as a standstill forbiddance, but the question is, is the standstill only forbidden for oscillations or also for waves? As for electromagnetic waves of the quantum vacuum, fact is, these waves are the zero-point waves of the quantum vacuum, as we spoke about, in connection with the name of Casimir. Obviously, they cannot come to standstill. The force and the pressure of Torricelli's gas are utilized to drive a steam engine as it has been invented by James Watt. But this was invented already a quarter of a millennium ago, thus it is not brand new. Although we drive our cars according to this principle today, and we make our electrical currents using this principle rather often. But now we want to utilize also the pressure of the zero-point waves. This is not yet a quarter of a millennium old. This is brand new. The steam engine is known rather well, but the zero-point energy motor is not yet known by very many people. And it is a pity that only very few people know it, because the zero-point engine has the great advantage in comparison with the steam engine that it does not combust any visible matter. It is driven by the zero-point energy of the quantum vacuum, also called vacuum energy. Thus, zero-point energy motors do not produce any waste, not exhaust gas, no radioactivity. Furthermore, the zero-point waves are for free. We do not have to pay for them such as for oil or gas. Zero-point energy motors worked on the empty vacuum and leave back the empty vacuum. Zero-point energy motors produce an extremely small alteration of the curvature of the relativistic space-time which is flowing with the speed of light into the universe, away from the Earth. Richard Feynman, who received a Nobel Prize for his theory of quantum electrodynamics, described some of the invisible matter of the vacuum with the means of the so-called vacuum polarization and therefore he developed a notation called his Feynman graphs. But not only in microscopic physics, such as quantum theory, the energy of the quantum vacuum plays a role, but also in astrophysics with regard to the whole universe. From measurements of astrophysics, analyzing the speed of expansion of the universe, we know that our world consists only by 5% of visible matter. These are the things we can touch with our fingers, such as planets, stars, humans, and also the screen on which you are seeing the pictures now. But about 25-30% to 30 of our world is invisible matter, such as, for instance, elementary particles not yet being discovered. But the main part of our world, namely 65 or 70%, is so-called dark energy. And part of it is the zero-point energy of the quantum vacuum, which is the main topic of the presentation here. It is unbelievable, but two-thirds of the mass of our complete university is vacuum. It's heavy. Yes, the vacuum has much more weight than all visible matter together. And the invisible matter of the vacuum is what we utilize when we drive a zero-point energy motor. But why did mankind not utilize this energy for such a long time? It is the inner temptation which we have to overcome in order to find out that there is something within the nothing of the vacuum which we can use. Unfortunately, the topic of vacuum energy is still known only by very few people, and this explains why it is not included into the scientific community properly. But let us not regret the problems. Let us tend our attention towards creative work to find out how we can utilize this energy. For this reason, I performed an experiment, which I did as a guest at the Otto von Guericke University of Magdeburg. By the way, I saw the original hemispheres of Otto von Guericke in this university, so the vacuum comes back to its origin. 
But in this presentation I do not want to tell about Otto von Gericke's experiment. I want to tell about my experiment, to which we will come later. At first I want to focus our attention to literature and see what other colleagues somewhere on Earth already did. An example, therefore, is the zero-point energy converter by Hans Kohler. He was captain of a ship and he did not know any knowledge or any terminology of scholarly textbooks of physics. Nevertheless, he was able to build two types of zero-point energy converters which he called Magnetstromapparat and the other one Stromerzeuger. An example of the Magnetstromapparat can be seen in the picture whereas we do not have samples of the Stromerzeuger nowadays. Hans Kohler began his work in 1923, continued in the Second World War, but after the war he did not do much scientific work. The Magnetstromapparat is said to be unusual in Internet and the Stromerzeuger is not commented in Internet any further, so that mankind nearly forgot about its ex existence. Hans Kohler explained that the Magnetstromapparat was only for the purpose of testing, but the Stromerzeuger is a powerful zero-point energy converter. Despite of all modern criticism, Kohler's results have been confirmed by the English Secret Service as well as by professors from the universities of Berlin, Munich, Trondheim and Copenhagen. Another example for ZPE, zero-point energy converter, goes back to the legendary Nikolai Tesla. He worked on a system for wireless electrical power distribution but he was stopped by J.P. Morgan because the wireless electrical power distribution would not have a possibility to connect a wattmeter to measure how much people would have to pay for electricity. This was Tesla's famous work at Wardenclyffe Tower. But from where did Tesla want to get the energy which he intended to distribute? It's rather simple. Tesla had had a zero-point energy converter to produce electrical energy from vacuum energy. In the Internet, this fact is often regarded to be a fairy tale, but the real reality is different. In reality, Tesla built a prototype of this ZPE converter and demonstrated its functionality by driving a car with a maximum speed of 140 km per hour. He did his demonstration in the north of the USA, in the region of the city Buffalo and to the Niagara Falls. He used this car for several weeks and then the regional newspaper reported about his demonstration, but soon his car disappeared together with the ZPE converter. Normally I would not dare to speak about this topic because in the internet many people doubt that it might be true. But in this special case I have a rather direct contact which shows me that this is, uh, the story is not fantastic. I spoke with Klaus Jebens who is not far away from 90 years old now and who had been the owner of an inventory company in Hamburg which is now driven by his sons. Klaus Jebens is of importance for our presentation here because his father Heinrich Jebens had been president of the National German Inventor Office in 1930, driven by the German government. And in his official function he was in America to give a medal of honor to Thomas Alva Edison. On his trip to America he visited not only Edison but also Nikolai Tesla who showed him his ZPE car, Tesla even allowed Heinrich Jebens to see the zero-point energy converter with which he drove the car. But Jebens had to promise Tesla that he will never tell this to anybody as long as Tesla was living. After Tesla's dead, he told few words to his son Klaus Jebens, but he was not able to reproduce the converter. Klaus Jebens tried hard to reproduce the converter, but he also did not manage it. 
Heinrich Jebens wrote a short protocol of this, which has been copied to the book Die Urkraft aus dem Universum by Klaus Jebens in German language. By the way, this book is very interesting for those who can read German language because it gives a wonderful overview over several dozens of ZPE converters reported worldwide. The picture of Tesla and the picture of the car are taken as copies from this book. The little book is not very expensive and gives newcomers a good introduction into the topic of zero-point energy conversion. In reality, there are much more zero-point energy motors on Earth than Jebens could speak about. The problem of several zero-point motors is that in some cases the inventors dream about becoming rich when bringing the invention to the market. In these cases they do not present their inv invention to publicity and then their invention disappears after some time. The eldest zero-point energy converter, by the way, which Jeben speaks about, was made in the 13th century by Pater Petrus Peregrinus de Maricourt. A trial of a reproduction by Lee Bauman is reported in 1954 and another report is given by John Bedini in 1996 but I could not evaluate clear results when looking in the internet. For all those who do not like unclear reports but who prefer hard facts, I want to give the hint to Zero Point Motor by Terawatt which has got certificate by the highly respected TÜV organization coming from Germany and additional as a confirmation independently by the highly respected underwriter laboratories of the United States. Scientists are used to believe in results only after reproduction. So here we see two certificates. The enumeration of ZPE converters might be prolonged for many further converters but probably this would be boring soon. Thus I prefer to resume. The zero-point energy of the quantum vacuum is existing and it can be utilized after conversion into classical type of energy, such as electrical or mechanical energy. It is not a problem to drive powerful motors with zero-point energy, without any pollution of our environment, without paying for energy. The zero-point energy of the quantum vacuum is inexhaustible and a free source of energy for everybody. The question whether the zero-point energy of the quantum vacuum is really inexhaustible can be answered rather easily. If we perform an extremely cautious estimation of the total zero-point energy available in the universe, following measurements of astrophysics, we estimate the zero-point energy as being printed on the screen now. And this energy is flowing with the speed of light all over the universe, so that always new energy passes the Earth. Other estimations within scholarly physics come to much larger amounts of energy within our universe. So it is clear that mankind will never be strong enough to extract a noticeable percentage of this energy from the universe. So, the zero-point energy of the quantum vacuum is a wonderful source of energy. No problems for environment, no pollution, inexhaustible, free for everybody. I don't see anything missing. So this is the ideal source of energy. The only disadvantage of this source of energy is... The only disadvantage this energy source has is that energy industry does not like it because energy will be too cheap then, so we will not have to pay for oil or gas or electricity any further.